Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Realtree, Muddy Outdoors, Frigid Forage, Hoyt Archery, Fuse Accessories, Rocket Broadheads, Scott Archery, Redneck Hunting Blinds, Cabela's, Bloodsport Arrows, Trophy Rock, Yeti Coolers, Non-Typical Wildlife Solutions, Quiet Cat, Deer Grow, Icon Cameras, and Nikon. Last year, Chantel and I made the move to Southern Iowa and we picked up a new hunting property here. And once we walked to the property, I noticed that there was uh, ditches, there were plenty of open gates and funnels that was gonna make this property a really exciting place to hunt. And I noticed that there was another spot that would set up really good for a do-it-yourself poor man plot. So the first thing we did uh, this summer is we burned off the grass, uh, made a real nice uh, seed bed that we were gonna be able to broadcast some big and beastie into. We got the right amount of fertilizer on it and we got some really excellent results with the big and beastie. So my first card pull that got me excited came from a spot that we call the open gate. And we had a lot of bucks moving through this area and the buck that stood out the most to me was this really big eight pointer and this is the buck that I wanted to kill. And I moved in for a hunt right away and actually that night, the first day in the stand, I ended up having an encounter with the buck that I shot. He came out just for a few seconds in the ditch down in front of us and worked his way then out into the cornfield, but it had me excited for what was yet to come in the season and I was definitely looking forward to hunting him. I had a few really exciting hunts from that open gate stand in the first few weeks of the season. I saw a lot of deer, I missed a great buck uh, one of the first nights in, and then just a few days later, I redeemed myself and shot another buck that we had on camera moving through that gate. So with my tag filled, I was already looking forward to late season. I planned on getting a late muzzleloader tag. So I had that big and beastie food plot in the back of my mind. I was really looking forward to hunting that big eight pointer over it. But on November 5th, we had a twist come along and the neighbor actually told me that he hit that big eight and that we weren't sure if he was gonna live or not. So after the buck got hit, my buddy asked me if I had any pictures of him and I went back to a camera that I knew was in a really good spot. It was set up over a ditch funnel where the deer were constantly cruising during the rut and I pulled the card in that camera and I had a lot of pictures of him uh, moving through that spot. So obviously the hit didn't affect him too much. He was doing normal rutting activities. He was chasing does and he actually even broke off his brow tine after the hit. And uh, moving into Thanksgiving, this deer was showing up uh, in daylight on the food plot. So Chantel bought a uh, first season shotgun tag and that was her primary target for the first week of shotgun season in Iowa. So the shotgun season didn't work out for Chantel as I hoped it would. We didn't see very many deer, we had warm temperatures, but I had cameras out and after the end of the second gun season, I checked my cameras again and there he was walking through the, through the gate the day after the shotgun seasons ended. So I knew I had a target to hunt during muzzleloader season and I was really excited. Today is January 2nd and I'm back in a stand um, that I actually just hung a few days ago. I'm set up in a cedar tree tonight and the reason I hung this stand here is because I have a, a big and beastie food plot here off to the west of me and it's only about 120 yards away from this stand but the problem with setting up a ground blind in this location is the topography of the field is just so rolling that I can't see over some of the hills out here in front of me in this cut cornfield. But being up in the cedar tree, even though I'm only about 10 feet up, I can get a really good view of this field and I can cover pretty much anything in this uh, little smaller section of the field out in front of me. So actually on December 30th, I hunted a stand called the Open Gate, which is a little bit east of here. And on my way down, when I got out of the stand, I noticed a bunch of deer out in the field. And one looked to be a pretty uh, good sized deer and this is after dark, so I couldn't tell really what it was. Sure enough, we checked the trail cameras yesterday and the big nine pointer that I'm in here after tonight was out in that big and beastie food plot. So I'm hoping with similar conditions tonight, that buck is gonna come out into that food plot and give me a nice about 120 yard shot. So I'm filming myself just because this tree is so small that I can't get another stand in it. 
and uh, it makes for an awesome setup because I have so much cover. I'm gonna settle back, it's just after two o'clock. Um, got a few hours ahead of me, wanted to get in here nice and early, so I'm hoping for a really good night. The does have been feeding out in that big and beastie for about a half hour now. And they keep looking behind them into that draw. That's actually the direction that that buck enters the food pot from, so things are looking good. It's still plenty early. We, we might see him tonight. I can't believe it. I think I just shot that big nine that I was after. The shot looked good, it felt good. It was about 130 yards. Um, I felt rock solid. I don't have a rest up here, but I shot and I saw a mule kick. And I sure think I got him. He sure acted like he got hit. I'm gonna have to watch the footage back. I'm in here filming myself, so it's hard to really get a good idea what happened. All right, it's been, I'd say about a half hour since I shot at that buck. And John came here, he's running the camera right now. We brought the four wheeler and uh, we're gonna watch back the footage one more time. Um, we're at least gonna walk up to where I shot at the deer, see what we have for sign from there and uh, just take it from there. So keeping our fingers crossed. I'm pretty sure I see blood on the side of the ridge from here. So, if I do, that's a good sign. See that? It's really spraying. There he is. Yes. Oh man. John, he is awesome. <laughs> this is a buck that Chantel and I have both been going after. And this deer is a total homebody. He lived on this farm. And uh, Chantel came back here just a few days ago. Um, and this deer was in the food plot in daylight. So I figured I had to get in here as soon as I could. We've had great weather conditions for late season deer hunting. Uh, real cold, high pressure bluebird days. And I came in here tonight by myself, 
filming out of that little cedar tree and it couldn't have worked out any better. I can't believe it. it this just caps off what's been an unbelievable season for me. So I couldn't be, be more thankful and more blessed to have been able to get this deer on the ground tonight. Here he is, it's the next day. We got him uh, cleaned up and dragged out here. We were running out of light last night. Uh, that food plot that I was hunting is a small big and beastie plot, only about a half acre, that I put in this summer with the help of the guys in the office. The deer were hitting it last night. We finally got some good cold weather here in Iowa and uh, the deer were on their feet. He was in the plot at 3.30 and I shot him just before four o'clock, so. That worked out great. And this is a deer that I have a lot of pictures of throughout the season. And we continued to get pictures of him then throughout the fall up until November 5th when the neighbor, a buddy of mine actually who hunts the neighboring property, got a shot at him and hit him. He hit him high and forward. Obviously they weren't able to recover the deer. I started getting pictures of him not too long after that. And even with this deer being so daylight active before him getting shot, he did go nocturnal for about a week. After that, he started showing more daylight activity. And that's something that a lot of people are always wondering. What does a deer do after it's missed, shot at, spooked, or in this case, actually hit? I killed this deer maybe not even a half mile from where the neighbor hit him. That just goes to show you that even though you might bump a deer, you might spook it, you're not gonna completely throw it out of its home range. This deer was a homebody. He lived here on this property all throughout the, the deer season and finally surfaced actually in daylight on uh, December 30th. So I thought I missed my one opportunity at him and waited for more good conditions, which I got last night. The big and beastie plot was filling up with deer and it, at 3.30 he came out, gave me about a 130 yard shot and I made the most of it. I couldn't be happier. This is a great buck and I am thrilled to cap off my 2015 deer season with him. Well, Eric uh, wrapped up a great season. He had three bucks this past season. He said each one of them was his biggest one. They got bigger as the season went on, so I think he's got three going on the wall. Uh, got one, one evening left here. This is the very last night of the uh, Iowa deer season, uh, bow or gun. Greg and I are about halfway back to this uh, big bottom field. And this is a tough spot to bow hunt because the field is so big. It's about seven acres in size. And trying to get a deer within you know, 30 to 40 yards on a spot like that is pretty tough. We should see a lot of deer because it's really cold. We've had this cold snap come in uh, yesterday. It rolled in. And uh, you know today it's single digits and about a 10 mile an hour wind. The deer should be hitting the food. Our biggest challenge is getting in here without making a bunch of noise. Uh, the snow is all frozen and really crunchy. so. My fear is that the deer are going to know by the time we get in there that we're already there, but uh, we're going to give it our best. Uh, I'm, a, I'm sure we're going to see some deer one way or the other. At the very end, I'll wrap this thing up and, and then we'll talk about what we're doing over the next couple of episodes. I've got about 50 minutes left to my evening hunt here. The, uh, I know we spooked some deer going in because we saw them run off, but we have had some come out this evening already. Not as many as I would have expected, but you know, there's a lot of time left in the hunt. This is uh, probably our, our third to the last episode of the season. I believe next week we'll be back with the ATA wrap up, which really was a tour of all of our sponsors booths at the ATA show where we talk about new products that they're bringing out and then our final episode will be the uh, uh, season finale and that's always a lot of fun because we get a chance to reflect back on the whole season the highlights that that came along and really relive the the action that we enjoyed 
So in the next few minutes here, we're gonna bring you the rest of the action from this evening's hunt. But otherwise, I'll be back again next week and we'll talk about the ATA show. I appreciate you joining me. We'll see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail. And remember to always dream big. <laughs>